Alrighty, y'all, another day, another video. And as always, before I get into the topic, I want to talk about my debut novel, Gods and Goddesses, Children of Ragnarok Care. Now, this is a mature dark fantasy that focuses on a divine family and specifically focuses on the godlings, or also known as the Children of Ragnarok Care, as they grow up throughout the book to learn responsibilities of uh, like defending the world from harm. And while they learn these responsibilities, there is a wraith blood that lurks in the darkest of corners. Now, this book is 596 pages long, and it has several illustrations, some that are uh, not safe for work. And if you want to go ahead and, you know, get yourself a copy, paperback, for example, is $16. Now, I do have it on Kindle Unlimited. Kindle Unlimited is basically for free. And if you want to get it digitally, it's going to be $9.99. However, I do have a sampler that ranges from the prologue to the second chapter. So again, if you're feeling generous, um, go ahead and search search down where the description is. I would have the link there. and It'll take you right to it. And I give you my thanks in advance. Now, I also want to bring attention to my uh, comic that I'm making, and it's called Nightfall nice Eldritch, which is also an, a mature dark fantasy that focuses on two entities that have been warring with each other for centuries. It updates every week, uh, specifically on Sundays, and the art my artist is Nefarious Watcher. Great guy, very cool and very talented. And as y'all can see with these little previews I'm showing when I'm scrolling down my uh, Twitter or X, <laughs> um, you see that you know the pages are indeed there. And recently, pages 10 and 11 have been released on this little thread that I've been uh, working on. So, you know, I will have a link to to it in the description and. Doesn't cost anything. Just, just know that it's a safer work version, and I'm not going to be showing anything too crazy there. Okay, so that's it for all that, and I just wanted to show you guys this uh, article I have. I had I had it in my uh, little record keeper of sorts, and uh, it looked interesting because. It talks about not only Lord of the Rings, but also uh, John A. Douglas, which I've been a subscriber to for, uh, I, I, I guess a year. It's been it's been a while. I can't really say when, but I've been I liked his content a lot. And so, get into this article it says uh, for my listeners, my people, the people who don't watch videos but just listen. Epic fantasy author John A. Douglas trashes the Lord of the Rings, the War of Rahum origin for Hera. I, I think I pronounced that correctly. And I just want to say that I'm not the biggest Lord of the Rings um, fan. I like Lord of the Rings, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, an, I'm a normie. Okay. I'm a normie with it. I only know, I only watch the, uh, the live action films. <laughs> so let's get into it. <clears throat> and I, and I gotta say this before I really start reading. I don't know what's up with like everything trying to be anime nowadays. And I'm a little bit guilty of that, but that's because I actually grew up with that with that type of stuff, actually. I watched it before I knew even understood what it was you know, it it was uh, called anime. But um it just this is just um this kind of gives me a little bit of concern because not everything needs to have like this type of anime style to it but that's my opinion see epic fantasy author john a douglas trashed the origin of hera that warner bros is using in the lord of the rings the war of the Rohirrim. again i hope i pronounced that correctly a companion book for the film was released and provides an origin for hera an original character for the film who is also its main protagonist the origin states at just 19 summers, Hera is the youngest of Helm, Hammer, Helm Hammerhand's three children and the only girl. 
As the daughter of the noble line, she is a valuable pawn in the game of king's making and of building alliances and seems destined for life as the wife of a uh, Gondorian princeling whose children will know nothing of Rohan's ways. It continues, born under a harvest moon, her life was all too soon marked by tragedy when her mother died in childbirth. The princess was raised alongside her two brothers by warrior king and could ride before she could walk, becoming one of the fastest riders in the kingdom. As a young girl, she became friends with Wolf, the son of Lord Breca of the West March. The two often played at fighting, teasing, and laughing with each other. Hera is now, young, now a young woman and skilled with a sword. Wild, adventurous, and carefree, Hera knows her own mind and will not allow her life to be planned for her. Whatever the reason, she is more likely to be found wearing riding clothes, though when summoned to attend her father's councils in uh, Medusa, she will be persuaded into a long, uh, a long gown with ribbons to tie back her unruly long red hair. It concludes... Oh, this is pretty nice though. Wow, that's a nice um character sheet kind of. Wow, I like it. <clears throat> Douglas, the author of the Black Crown, trashed the origin uh, and description writing on X. Some art for the War of Rahum companion book got released in Yeesh. That might be the most cliched. She's not like the other girls' origin I've ever read. He added, basic B, girl boss, romancy, uh, romancy lead, to character energy. Just bleeds Tolkien, doesn't it? At least when he wrote Erwin's uh, arc, it was novel at the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta look back at this. I, I do like this. Um, I do like this illustration of her. And she, this is her first time. It's, that's what it says. Like, this is her first time. Like, she being in Lord of the Rings on it because hmm. good looking character very good very good style choices but narratively yeah it might it might not be that great as Douglas rhetoric, uh, rhetorically notes this description is nothing like what Tolkien would write and it certainly has nothing to do with what he actually wrote in the uh, appendix for the Lord of the Rings. This is what Tolkien wrote for uh, of Helm Hammerhand's unnamed daughter to one of these consuls, Frega rode with many men, and he asked the hand of Helm's daughter for his son, Wolf. That is it. She is not mentioned again. <laughs> While the unnamed daughter is never mentioned again, the request for marriage does play a central role in, over in the overall story that leads to Wolf invading Brawn. Tolkien details that this invasion of Ron is preceded by a confrontation between Helm, uh, Hammerhand, and Freyka. Freyka asks for Helm's daughter in marriage to his son, Wolf. Hammerhand rejects it and calls him fat. Freyka responds saying, O kings that refuse a proffered, <clears throat> a proffered staff may fall on their knees. The two then participate in a king's council. However, after it, is after it is concluded, Hammerhand confronts Freyka, rebukes him for his words of rebellion, and kills him with a single punch. He then declares Freyka's son, Wolf, and his men enemies of the king. Four years after this confrontation, uh, Rohan is invaded by Dun Dunladings, led by Wolf. They were joined by enemies of Gondor that landed in the mouths of Leif. Leif Noy and he said, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, Lord of the Rings fans. I'm, I know I'm butchering stuff. Gosh. Uh, what do you make of Douglas's trashing of the origin of Hera in Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rhyme? Oh. I'll be honest. I like, I like her design. I love her design. Truly. Looks spectacular. But... With what was mentioned in this article, with the with the excerpt given to us about this, um, I'm sorry, about this whole ordeal, uh, you know, getting to know her and what 
setting up the premise. This um, this doesn't sound token, and it's not token, honestly, especially with with uh, Warner Brothers or Amazon. It's just like, look, I know we want to try and make things, uh, you, you know, based like based off of a uh, Lord of the Rings, but it doesn't need to be really affiliated with Lord of the Rings. You know, it could you could say, hey, this was inspired by Lord of the Rings, but it doesn't need to be a part of the Lord of the Rings. And that's that's one of the major problems that we have with the Western entertainment of modern times, because it, it's just like they're I, I, I guess they're afraid to have things be by themselves and see how and see how, you know, if it would succeed or not. And that's usually kind of a telltale sign that they're not confident um, as well because they have to, you know, hook it, hook it to this, uh, you know, like Lord of the Rings or, or what's another one that they, you know, or uh, like Batman or something, dude. It's it's like you're there. It's like they're intentionally destroy. They are intentionally uh, destroying it. And at the same time, it's it's like, come on, y'all, just. Why can't why why can't we do things right? It's fine. I'm fine with experimenting. I truly am. I'm fine with experimenting. But as long as it makes sense, go ahead. But if you're just doing this just, you know, as they always do, they're doing it just to just do it and and push a, you know, a a, a character that could possibly be very interesting throughout the throughout generations but it's you know it's the debut of this new character and this already this character is already being held back because of weird weird people um who are in these positions of power that shouldn't be there because you know these people just at the end of the day want to lecture us or or not even want to make they just want to make I don't know. I'm I'm kind of losing my train of thought here because when I look at this character, I think I think this character shouldn't even be in Lord of the Rings, and I think many of y'all would agree with me because the way how she looks. I mean, this looks like a typical character that you would see within a fantasy book, a fantasy book illustration, or or a fantasy anime, and. I it when I look at this, I don't see you know it doesn't scream Lord of the Rings to me. It doesn't. This just screams like, hey, this is a a I hate to say it, but a generic fantasy female character that's you know both that looks both that's both noble but also knows how to fight. How many how many characters how many character tropes do we have with that you know? Like, come on, man. Yeah, just look at it. You can't. You wouldn't be able to tell it's Lord of the Rings. Even and that's not even look at this description of her, or whatever that is. I I assume it's a description of her. But you know, I I get. I mean, John. You know, John has a point. John has a point. And sadly, we've seen this pattern. For nearly ten years, maybe maybe we're we're at ten years. But as far as I can remember, you know, this stuff started back in twenty sixteen. As far as I can remember, where it started getting out of hand and not being implemented um, in a smart fashion. But um, that's it for this video, y'all. I didn't want to drag it out too much. Uh, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Like dislike share subscribe it's all within your power thanks for watching this and ciao